We often think of nuclear bombs as extreme weapons of destruction. While they're certainly that, in the 1960s, the world's superpowers began investigating more practical uses for these powerful devices. The US and Soviet Union were embattled in the heat of the Cold War in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Both countries had stockpiled nuclear weapons, but thousands of them simply sat idly across their respective country. The US subsequently created Operation Plowshare and the Soviet Union, a program called Nuclear Explosions for the National Economy. Operation Plowshare in the US was formed to explore the possibility of using nuclear explosions for excavation or natural gas fracturing. The evidence of this project's tests can still be seen through craters in the Nevada desert. Surprisingly, this research project persisted for nearly 20 years, from 1958 to 1975. The Soviets were also researching practical uses for nuclear explosions, and like the US, their research was focused on natural gas and mining. Unlike the US, however, little concern was given to the environmental impact of these Soviet nuclear tests. Soviet engineers behind the project once contaminated a densely populated region along the river Volga. They also decided to blow up a river to create a reservoir, which they succeeded in doing, except it's still radioactive to this day. During this nuclear research, scientists realized that they might be able to solve a problem that had been raging for years. In 1963, a gas well in southern Uzbekistan suffered a blowout at a depth of 2.4 kilometers. The natural gas caught ablaze and for the next three years, it burned steadily. This unquenchable fire was causing the loss of more than 12 million cubic meters of gas each day. That's enough to supply the needs of many major cities and roughly the equivalent volume of 12 Empire State Buildings. No one in the country knew how to put the fires out, and all previous attempts had failed. It was at this point of desperation that dropping a nuclear bomb on the fires seemed like a pretty great idea to engineers and officials. Physicists calculated that if a nuclear bomb was detonated close to the blowout region, the resulting pressure could shut any hole within 50 meters. Researchers ultimately calculated that the bomb needed to be 30 kilotons, or double the power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima in World War II. After confirming the calculations, officials decided that a nuclear explosion was the best way to stop the raging fire. In 1966, two wells were drilled sloping towards the blowout region determined to be at a depth of 1.4 kilometers needed to seal the holes. The 30 kiloton bomb was lowered into the most promising well, and then the well itself was backfilled with cement. Then, they detonated the bomb. There's no better way to understand what that day was like other than this account from the Soviet newspaper Pravda Vostika of Tashkent. On that cold autumn day in 1966, an underground tremor of unprecedented force shook the ground with a sparse grass cover on white sand. A dusty haze rose over the desert. The orange-colored torch of the blazing wells diminished, first slowly, then more rapidly, until it flickered and finally died out. For the first time in 1,064 days, quiet descended on the area. The jet-like roar of the gas well had finally been silenced. In 20 seconds, a three-year-long fire had been extinguished using a nuclear explosion, much to the satisfaction of Soviet engineers. The test was a success, but soon engineers were presented with another case to test their experiment again. A few months later, a fire broke out at the Pamik gas field, and the fire spread to the surface through various holes. Engineers and physicists determined that in order to stop this fire, they would need a stronger 47 kiloton bomb lowered to a deeper depth depth of 2.4 kilometers. The bomb was lowered into its well, backfilled with cement like before, and detonated. After a few days, the fire had stopped. It was after this second successful attempt at putting out large gas fires that the Soviets had found what they considered a highly practical use for nuclear explosions. They used nuclear bombs to stop a fire in May 1972 in the city of Mary and Asia. In July of that same year, they also used a nuclear explosion to stop a leaking well in Ukraine. The last known about attempt of this practice was in 1981 on a well on the northwestern coast of Russia. Of all of the explosions, the second at the Pamir 
unique gas field was the deepest and most powerful. And that's the story of how excess nuclear weapons, curious Soviet engineers, and rampant natural gas fires led to the underground detonation of massive nuclear bombs during the Cold War.